Thank you, Ken. My first experience with mentoring occurred early in my professional career. I was working at Neutralite on Beach Boulevard in Buena Park. I had worked in, in production, manufacturing for several years, and I had a chance to work in the lab in what they call product development, but which now they've renamed research and development. Well, in addition to the mechanics of manufacturing, we also had to deal with ingredient selection, the science behind it, investigating new opportunities, talking to the marketing people, negotiating, problem solving, a lot more detail, a lot more difficult things. And it was because of mentoring that I was able to actually be successful. Without mentoring, success is a much more arduous process. Yeah. But I'm going to go a little bit off script right now because I want to talk to you about something that I think is an important ingredient for successful mentoring that you probably haven't heard too much about yet, but perhaps you have. Grit. I've spoken about this in the past. Some of you have heard me speak about it. And it actually is what it is. It's a matter of perseverance which brings you to skill development, which over time can bring you success. Actually, in order for this to be successful, it can, th this element of grit applies both to mentors and to mentees. The mentor has already experienced some level of grit because they've developed some skill that they're going to pass along to you, hopefully. Now sometimes, especially in business, it's usually the, the older members who are secure in their career who are willing to give a leg up to the new people. But even here in Toastmasters, we are generally not worried about, oh, if I help them, I'm going to be somehow diminished. I might not get the promotion. But actually, so we're in a better position here that we can actually share more generously. And it really takes a can-do attitude. So with that as a backdrop, I'd like to talk a little, a little bit about what mentoring really involves. And this is a checklist that Toastmaster put forth, and it basically has to do with taking an interest for the mentor to take an interest in the mentee, but also it could work vice versa because there's a dynamic that goes on. If the mentee, if the, someone who wants to learn, never asks questions, well, the mentor might say, well, I guess they're secure, they feel fine, they're, they're satisfied, they don't need any of my input. So maybe, maybe my input's not welcome. When I was first starting off, one of my favorite phrases was, how come? Why? What, what's, the, what's the understand? I wanted to understand the whole thing. And when there's a lot of things going on, then there's a lot to learn. In fact, in Toastmasters, there is a lot to learn because as Jim was pointing out, even just capturing the video and then editing the video can be a skill that we can learn from one another. We can pass it along and help each other out. So these are the kinds of things that, that we can do. Also, role model, insights, and helping someone. You know, so often in life, it's all about me. We always want us to help ourselves, and we don't really care about helping others. But as we mature, we're in a position where we can actually take pleasure at helping somebody else. For instance, if I was able to give you a tip that could make you successful on a speech contest, I would be delighted to help you do that. And I would be happy to do that. I've gone through a speech contest before in the past. I worked all the way up through the club, the area, the division, and I made it to the district. And the competition there is more intense, so really how to prepare for that is something that I experienced, and I felt fulfilled doing that. So this is the kind of input and leadership and sharing of our experiences that we can really help with each other with. Now, as far as the transition, well, when a new person comes in, we can mentor them with things that are basic. 
what is going to be happening, what is the table topics all about, things that are really simple, but, and of course with confidence. I can tell you this, in my professional career, when I was getting, pushing the envelope and going off into what might be called dangerous waters in terms of approval from the other people, it was the my mentors or people who I respected and they gave me a vote of confidence. They patted me on the back, they said something to me like, you're doing a great job or this is really important and I'm, I'm happy to see you doing this. Those kinds of co com comments helped me to move forward when I was in a stage of doubt, doubting myself. Am I doing the right thing? Am I, am I going too far? Am I taking this too far? And so this is the kind of input that a mentor can give to a mentee that's very, very valuable. And of course, learning things, you can accelerate the process. Especially if, for instance, I know that I have been reached a plateau in, in Toastmasters where I didn't really push myself. Just kind of coasting, coasting, and I was fine with that. Comfortable, it was fun, and so I didn't really progress. But if you have a mentor who says, okay, what's the plan, what's the next step? They can kind of prod you along and say, okay, yeah, well, I guess you're right. I probably should take it to the next step, whatever that is for you. So, so this, dy this is a dynamic, as I was talking about, a give and a take and the interaction, because the more you interact with your mentor and the mentee, the more you're going to have a fluid conversation. So things like how I have benefited as a mentor, how you have been benefited as a mentee. If you could just give uh, some examples of that during your conversations. Talking about uh, uh, also encouraging outside events, like a, like a contest. This is very good for encouraging people. Of course, sometimes they may be intimidated by that. They might say, well, I don't know, I'm not, I feel insecure. But if you say, I'll go with you, it's not a problem. I'll show you the ropes, and it's going to be good. Acknowledging progress, explaining officers' duties, explaining speech contests, describing the organization, these are all pretty basic. But actually it's the, with the more advanced skills that we really can benefit a lot from. And even things like professional speaking. There are certain tips, tricks, techniques that I have learned from, I've, I've been I speak on the outside perhaps once a year on average, and I've been paid uh, a gratuity, or let's say they call it a um, honorarium, $200 for one, almost $400 for another, and $1,500 for another one. And I learned a few things along the way, and I, these are the kinds of advice, insights that I can share with you, but not just me, but any mentor can share their experiences that they've had going forward. Of course, uh, the mentors themselves can receive benefits as well. Uh, because we take pleasure in seeing other benefit, but also, uh, you might say down here, receiving recognition. Well, I would say that I don't know exactly what they meant by receiving recognition as being a, a motivation, but I can tell you that it is very fulfilling when you see one of your mentees succeed. And it's actually like, wow, this is, this is so gratifying that it's actually a reward, just like our previous speaker was talking about, reward reinforces conduct and behavior. And so it is that with that type of thing. Of course, what I've learned too is that even though I was very willing to be a mentor because I had benefited so much from the mentor relationship early in my professional career, I was always happy and willing to be a mentor. But most people are a little bit apprehensive about wanting to be mentored. It's like, well, if I say I don't know certain things, what are they going to think about me? It's like, uh, I don't want to have that, you know, people thinking that I, I'm not, I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm just kind of like, you know, they want to be in charge. I can do this. You know, I, I know the ropes. And, you know, fake it till you make it type of thing. 
but actually if you're willing to be humble and teachable and that's really what I think true humility is all about is to be teachable then you're on your way being open to new ideas being receptive being eager being loyal and also being grateful or at least not being ungrateful of course a mentor needs to be available patient sensitive respectful flexible and actually Toastmasters has another half a dozen things on the right hand column that they wanted to throw in there but I thought that that would just muddy the waters because these are the basic these are the basic principles of being teachable and wanting to learn what's kind of interesting too is that when it comes to mentoring a mentoring relationship doesn't really last permanently it it evolves because for instance it may be that once I've learned something well enough then I kind of taper off in, with regard to the to my questioning and it may be that the the mentor also says well I've taught him everything I know so we don't really need to take it any further and so then you might be thinking it just kind of leave it open leave the door open you might want to go back to them at any point but then you might say well who is my next person that I can tap as a resource and so that is how that that proceeds but what's really kind of interesting is that even though mentoring the mentoring relationship does not last forever it actually the benefits of mentoring can last forever that's why mentoring is so important but you know what the real the real key is don't forget it's grit because you have to persevere as indicated in this book it takes actually thousands of hours of skill building before you can have a skill that is developed enough that you can make a real difference in anybody's life whether it be your own or someone else's. Mr. Toastmaster.